Thanks for coming back in, y'all. We've got a very special guest who has himself seems to have a very special guest. <laughs> uh, on the stage, we've got GP Lackey. Round of applause. Listen to that. Thank you. What a cheering section. So GP brought uh, this year uh, a series of game-like things that he calls the Tamperdrome Collection. We're going to hear all about it. Take it away, GP. Yeah, hi. I'm GP Lackey, and uh, this is this is Bronson, who is also of co-op mode from Montreal. Hi. I'm just here for solidarity. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, Bronson's here to, l to lend me moral support while I ramble. Um, you might have seen their, their talk with the double fine uh, earlier. Uh, so I am, wait, yes. I am GP Lackey. I am uh, at Mouse Fountain on Twitter, if you want to look me up. And a good mnemonic for remembering that is it's like a mouse that's a fountain. <laughs> uh, so yeah, I'm going to talk about Tamper Drome, which you might have seen in the uh, arcade, uh, the spotlight. Um, and this is actually like a project that I've been working on for a little while because I got into doing many different kinds of image generating things. It's like I'm mostly like a, an artist on games, but I kind of like to make games myself, but they're usually like kind of big rambling projects and I want to have something that will just inspire me creatively in making my other art. So originally I made this thing called, uh, well I didn't name it, but it was just a thing that generated cat portraits. So I'm going to switch over to my Windows desktop here and show that. Uh, and it just, it looks like this. Uh, you can just, it has one input, which is a button that makes more cats. Um, you can get a lot of them. I kind of like, this isn't actually meant to be seen in motion, so I just kind of like slapped some sine waves on stuff to make it look alive. Um, it's actually kind of eerie because the eye position doesn't reset, so it's like they're, like one of those clocks, you know? Swinging eye clocks. Um, but working with, uh, Bronson, we actually made a, a Twitter bot that just posts portraits generated with this. It's called uh, Generate a Cat. And you can see it here. All, it just like throw, it just like sh throws up a picture of a cat, and it gives it a an adjective like agreeable, or old, a, a proud kitty cat, etc. As you can see, unfortunately, it's been broken since July. <laughs> yeah, it di it died a while ago. I'll um, fix it eventually, though, I promise. <laughs> um, but that was kind of cool. Like, it's nice. I don't know. We just got a nice little, like, feedback loop going with sharing this kind of stuff. Uh, Bronson also made this uh, generator face, which is this thing that generates these kind of, like, polygonal faces. And I think just by, like, randomly moving the spline around for the mouth and eyebrows, it's expressed every conceivable human emotion. <laughs> <laughs> So, oh, I like this one. I'm gonna favor that one. I'm gonna reach. I'm gonna retweet that one right now. <laughs> um, and so yeah, there's actually like a, there's a bunch of people doing this kind of like just image bot thing. It's really fun. I encourage you if you like to just like tinker on small projects to do that kind of thing. Um, there was this our friend Kenny made this one that's like. Uh, it was just like a 3D version of Bronson's, basically. Only it uses geospheres instead of... What? Go up. What? Look at that guy. Oh, yeah, that's great. I like that guy. It's like a <laughs> sort of fierce meatball. <laughs> um, yeah, I kind of lost the thread of my presentation there a bit. I was just like so in awe of that. I could just, I could just show other cool generators that I think are cool. Like this... this have you seen the moth generator? Does like everybody follow this? Because it's amazing. This was um this was a uh, uh, Katie Rose Pipkin and Lauren Schmidt and they made this really, really beautiful, like really subtle computer generated moths. And you can like tweet a word at it and it'll just like give you a species of moth that represents that thing. It's really gorgeous. Um and I also I they, oh, oh, you're still there. <laughs> I can't quit. <laughs> uh, um, yeah, there's also uh, 
someone I internet know who's really cool named Seleucius or Olav. And he did these things that are just like really cool art things. <laughs> I think this is actually, this is called Alien Hearts. It's on HEO. It's just like these structures. Um, what I like about these is like they're kind of like a, a, a nice creative prompt. Like I've been doing, <laughs> I should have brought some to show actually. I do like drawings inspired by, like I'll just like use a, a generator to sort of like make some surprising thing and then, you know, do drawings inspired by it or whatever. So it's kind of like, I don't know, you're like using, you're like instructing the computer to instruct you about what to do. This one's really cool too. It's called Speakable Horrors. <laughs> it's just these funky mushroom folks. Sometimes they're holding sticks or conches or something. That's fun. Uh, and then I guess I'm just going to show Tamper Drum. I can just talk about it. I can just like ramble about Tamper Drum for a bit. That's fun. Uh, so this was basically just a compilation of the different, um, some of the different generator things I was doing. Um, there's like an interface. There's a letter, keyboard letter based interface because I like the like, the plonky feeling of just like hitting a different button for everything. Um, I'll show this. I'll show them in order from my like least favorite to most favorite because this one's like just. That's all it is. It's just goblins. I was trying to get like a good like uh, variety of body types on characters, so I just made these things, these little goblins. They have cool hair sometimes. Um, is it a true story that this began for Katie Rose Pipkin's desktop thing? Do you want to talk about that? Oh yeah, that's true. I kind of forgot about that for some reason. Uh, yeah, Katie Rose Pipkin the, the, did some like curation at the Museum of Human Achievement here in Austin, uh, which is a super cool gallery. Um, and they were putting on a show that was uh, called I think it was the the Institute of Desktop Archaeology, um, and so I got sent a laptop and basically just had to find something to put on it that would be interesting to see in a gallery. And uh, what I ended up doing was making this whole kind of like constructed world that was represented by the like folder structure inside of the computer. So there'd be folders that were like an island, and then you would open the island folder, and there'd be like cities on it, which were other folders. And I wanted to populate it with something, so I made uh, this thing that just makes these strange characters. And there's like quite a bit of variety in them. And I like I made hundreds of these and then named them all by hand. Um, yeah, these guys are really fun. These, this some I like I like that their costumes end up looking somewhere. Like sometimes they look like some sort of elaborate formal wear and other times they look like diving gear or something. Um, but yeah, that was that was uh, was shown here in Austin. It was cool. <laughs> uh, and then I decided like, I, so I had these different things. I had done sort of like a black, like a monochrome look for everything that was inside of that project. And so I decided that I would kind of like use that as a unifying stylistic element to bring the other generators together. Like I did this ghost generator, which is probably gonna sound really cool. I'm gonna turn it up. <laughs> uh, and this I, I actually did on a train, on a train back from Ontario. Uh, so what it does Can is you like- turn it down a couple clicks? Yeah, is it, is it like just deafening out there? Yes. It sounds fine here, cool. Oh yeah, that's that's my the the chorus is my voice pitch shifted down. <laughs> like everything. Um, yeah, so this also has a feature where it, it it'll like generate a random name that's like constructed from a bunch of different phoneme phonemes that I thought sounded like names that ghosts would have, like zoos. <laughs> Seems plausible. Uh, I think this this might be actually a broken build, but it, it should it actually does set a seed so that it's always the same ghost generator from the same name. But I think that it might be like. Oh wait, is it actually working? What's Bronson look like? 
No, that's pretty good. That's acting. Yeah, I think that's me. <laughs> uh, oh yeah, this also has a feature where like you can uh, you can save a screenshot. Whoa, <laughs> it's slightly it like rotates and zooms the view momentarily, so sometimes you get a freaky like. Oh, didn't anybody else see that? Okay, yeah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> Unintentional jump scares. Um, I also exhibited this with, uh, like, at a, a bazaar in Toronto, and we had a label printer hooked up to it, so people could just, like, like generate something and then print a sticker out of it. Of it. Um, oh, yeah, so this also has the version of the CAD generator, which looks more or less the same as the other one, but black and white. And it generates um, really plausible cat names, like Wu or Mutimi. This would also be a great like baby name uh, <laughs> source, I think. <laughs> like if you don't, if you're just like stumped, you know, and it's like, <laughs> boom. There was one, I don't know if it's still, the problem is that I think that the generating changes a little bit with each version, but there was one that was called Perfect Egg. No, it was Simply Egg. No, it's, it's not the same anymore. There was one that looked like an egg, and it was called Simply Egg, and it was <laughs> amazing. <laughs> uh, yeah, and then there's dogs. Um, this generates different breeds of dogs. I don't know if you can hear the, can you hear the? It generates like a, a unique rhythm for each dog. There's kind of an angelic choir there too, for some reason. That's your dog. That's Monson's dog. <laughs> we found it, finally. Um, this is uh, a bunch of the sounds are from uh, Freesound and also uh, archive.org has some pretty cool, like, you can find, like, wax cylinder recordings from, like, the 1910s and stuff. And you can just, like, grab random snippets of jazz songs from the 1920s and do weird effects on them. <laughs> it's a good way to make sounds. Uh, so I also have this island generator um, that you enter coordinates and it shows you like what's there in this archipelago that's I guess 9,000, wait how many units is that? It's like 9,999 units by 9,999 units. Um, and like sometimes there's not islands, let's see if we can like find a not island. This might take a while. I'll accept that there's islands everywhere. Um, and this was kind of like, oh, there, yes, nice. Um, I was trying to do like sort of like a terrarium-like like model and miniature thing for that, you know, just have that feel of like something very tiny and observable. Uh, and it used to have pterodactyls and radio towers and little huts and ruined castles and stuff, but I had to take them out because they kept falling into the ocean. But I think I'll, I'll I'll put them back <laughs> eventually, like for the next the next build. The pterodactyl was really great because I di I didn't realize for a long time that it was like always there, but just very far away. So it would be like it was supposed to be this really rare thing, but actually, if you wa waited on any island for like long enough, it would just like fly in from the right side of the screen. <laughs> like it was always just out of view. Um, yeah, so that's Tamper Drum. That's just a bunch of weird things that make pictures. Um, oh, thank you. <laughs> uh, what time am I? That was like five minutes, right? <laughs> I was thinking I would, um, this might be a total train wreck, but I wanted to sort of try like live making a generator. I don't know if anybody's interested in that. <laughs> okay. I do all these in uh, Construct 2. I don't know if anybody uses that, but... Um, okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is like set up my workspace here. I have, this, I have this soundscape thing that I use when I work usually, which is like a... Um, uh, it's called MyNoise.net. And it lets you just like have yeah, animated sort of like white noise sounds. Is that loud? It's probably not loud, right? So I like to it's like. It's not loud. It's okay. You're good. I, I like to combine them in ways. Like you can have a cat purring, 
like and rain on a tent, and it's like it's like you're camping with your cat. <laughs> the site the site is adorable. There's like um like. People have these super cute comments where they like link their settings, like what settings they put, and they're like, oh, this one sounds like a tiger, or like, I don't know, this is like a healing sound for me. That kind of thing. And I'm also gonna put on this like Brian Eno that's slowed down. It's, it's music for airports, but just like slowed down to be like six hours long or something. No, it's like 48 minutes. No, this is the wrong one, this is the wrong video. What have I done? Hold on a second. I had it here. I obviously can't just play Brian Eno because there's copyright problems. I guess I, sh I should probably be in slightly more of a hurry than this, right? Yeah, it's the six hour time, time stretch version. Oh god, we're gonna have to watch a Mountain Dew ad or something, aren't we? <laughs> <laughs> I'm, just like, I'm just gonna look at anything else basically right now. So I already set up a construct project so I can start making things. Oh, actually, does anybody have a suggestion for what I should make? It should be something with a face. I feel like comfortable Frogs. making faces. Frogs. 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 Yeah. yeah, that makes a lot of sense. It's pretty good. I think that's okay. I'm gonna, I'm gonna bump up the cat slightly. Should I animate the cat? I mean, the problem is the cat can get like super bassy. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so what are we doing? What am I doing? I have a very exciting, like, already set up project here that just has, like, a background and a ball. Um, usually the first thing I do is make it so that when you press spacebar, it just, like, restarts the whole layout. And then you can, like, randomize things on the start of the layout, and it's just, yeah, it works perfectly. Um, let's just run that. Oh, God, what? Oh. Yeah, hold on. I forgot to set. It, it's great. It always like thinks that you want to run things in um, in an explorer by default. I guess I could fix that. So there we go. That's a generator. I'm pressing spacebar and it's regenerating. Um, and then I'll just do like a start of layout events. I'll just like you know. This is my. This is the the core to everything. It's just you random, just random range of numbers, you know? This is gonna be really cool. Whoa. Wait, that seems... Is it getting bigger each time? I don't understand this. Oh, I probably already scaled it, that's the problem. Besides, this is right. I'm gonna make some things smaller. I'm actually gonna delete that. So let's make some like frog-ish shapes. This is gonna be the head. So I'm just gonna like make a ball, I guess. I don't have any reference material for frogs. So this is gonna be me like drawing frogs from memory. It's great because like if you change things on like multiple, if you have like multiple axes of change, uh, you can make you can get a lot of variety out of not a lot of parts. Like. I mean, it's very obvious with the cat generator that things are rotated as well as scaled, as well as like having different uh, frames of animation and all that stuff. I think the cat generator is actually like the most advanced one because it even considers the different like fur types. So like ones they'll be like either fluffy or not fluffy, or they'll have like a certain like coat pattern, whatever. Do you have any questions while I'm doing this? That'd be fun. I can just like... I'm gonna give them two colors. I'm gonna do some two-tone frogs. Maybe just like a... Start down the middle or something. I was serious about questions, by the way. I'm just like... Oh, I feel like the rain's getting heavier. Wow, it's actually perfect for frogs. I, there's actually there's a one of one of them is like there's, there's one that's like a riverbank, riverbank soundscape. Maybe I should put that one instead. You think? Yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah, let's feel this. I'm, kind of, I'm sorry. For, I'm sorry for the cat. We're just gonna keep the cat too. <laughs> there's one I really like that's like a it's like an RPG battlefield, 
So you can just have like the soothing sound of like swords and mortars and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> there's also um, there's a, a, a B-52 uh, like cabin interior. Uh, where is it? No, it's, uh, it's called Riverbank. Yeah, what is that? yeah, rainy Riverbank. I feel like maybe that's going to be too much more rain. I'm, I'm sorry. I, I'm sorry that I removed the cat now because you could have had the, the sound, the sonar experience of like taking your cat for a walk by the river. Uh, how big is this thing? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Oh yeah. Right. It's an animation. This is the, the like the super uh, fun trick to do with this is you just like don't. Animated, and then uh, each time you create one of these, or actually, no, I'll put it on the start of the You can just set it to like a random thing in the range of the object's frame count. And then you're just like, man, we're like halfway there already. There's like different different types of frog head. Should I like uh, I should make the, I should do some I should do something more interesting with the scale, right? I should set it to like uh, I'm gonna throw some magic numbers in here. to work, right? That seems like something that should work. I'm actually feeling really relaxed from this music. Okay, it's not super exciting. Let's just like double the ranges, you know? Because like, I think it's better to be dramatic. Oh yeah, there we go. <laughs> Perfect. Uh, okay, well he needs eyes, obviously. He's not gonna create an eye object. Let's make it somewhat smaller than the head, I guess. What does a frog's eye look like? They have weird pupils, right? They've got like... Is Mason in the audience? We can use him for reference. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, actually, I think I should I should do the pupil as a separate object. I'll get way more bang bang for my buck that way. So this is just going to be the, the base like eye shape, and I guess we'll just oh, it's a bit big, isn't it? Oh, I put it on the wrong layer. Just unlock that. Um, so we have to find a way to like put the eye on there in a satisfying fashion. Oh, it's really bothering me that that's not exactly the same shade of gray. Hold on. Open that one up again. <laughs> cool. So we want to like put it, I guess there's a few ways we could do this. I could just like put it like a random distance from the center, right? That would work. Maybe the head will actually have an eye distance property. I don't remember how to add variables to something in this program. <laughs> oh yeah, it's right there. <laughs> That's where you would expect it to be. Like, I'm feeling the rain a lot. It's really, really good. I guess. Yeah, this will work. I'm sure this will work. We're going to set the eye distance to some random number between like, I don't know, 10, 50 maybe? If I wanted to be clever, I could actually set it to something proportional to like the width of the head. But I just don't feel like doing that. And then I shall create 
I gotta name that something other than Sprite because it's really bothering me. How do I create an object again? <laughs> Oh, actually, there's a better way to do this. I just realized. And then I'm going to move it to eye distance. So I have to do that twice. Wait, did I like, move it or did I set positions? Yeah. So I'll just be like X. That will work. It seems like it should work. Okay. I mean, yeah, it's doing something. <laughs> Doesn't exactly look like a frog. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I should move it. I should move it also to the top of the layer, right? Do we have any audience suggestions for this currently? I know it's pretty, pretty early. Yeah, it's not working. Oh, I see what I'm doing. I'm spawning it on the wrong layer. Yeah. I don't know that that's the default thing. Bam! There we go. That's a <laughs> frog. <laughs> it's more or less a frog. It's <laughs> good. It's good. <laughs> GP, I think you need frowns of varying extreme I intensity, like my tattoo. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I want to give them pupils first, though. I want to give up. I want to do a, real, a pupil real quick. The fun thing about doing this in something that's like, like object based, is that you can kind of. Um, you can make a bunch of objects that kind of like have their own rules, and then you can kind of compartmentalize things really nicely. Is that what a frog pupil looks like? No, that's like a goat. I'm thinking of a goat. I always mix those two up. Huh? Oh no, I'm good. I'm good. I kind of I prefer my ignorance. <laughs> <That is. laughs> What is my interest in generative stuff? Pretty high. Oh, um, <laughs> uh, I'm not sure how it's there. I mean, I've always thought it was super cool. Um, I guess I like that it's like you can kind of get more out of something than you put in. That's really exciting to me. Like, I actually generated a few designs that the cat generated that surprised me. And I mean, that wears off once you get really used to like what the rules like the space of the rules is, but you can still kind of like, you know, get something unexpected out of it. Like, yeah, I, I think it's that, <laughs> basically. Any other questions? Other questions, it keeps me occupied while I do these not super exciting parts. So each eye will spawn a pupil. It'll do that one, yeah, because it's the last one. I should also, like, I should give them a random scale, right? You know, like, at 50%. That should be cool. It's not, it's not going to be synchronized between the pupils, too. I think that'll be... Oh, they look like they're the same size. Oh, it's just subtle. It's too subtle, I think. Yeah, I should just do it from like zero to a thousand, uh, zero to hundred. <laughs> yeah, good, good point. <laughs> yeah, the minimum should just be like yeah, zero.
a croaking noise? Oof. Can I? I haven't. I have never tried. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, true. Yeah, yeah, true. I could just, I could just pop open Audacity real quick. <laughs> Wait, is this gonna work? Can I just like, work? yeah, I should, I should be able to work, right? Where's the audio here going? Oh, it'll have to be off my. Yeah, it'll be my computer's mic. Ribbit. That was that was good. Ribbit. Ribbit. That looks better. Ribbit. Ribbits. <laughs> yeah, that one's. Oh, we just need. Yeah, that, that one's perfect. I'll actually, even better. Um, get, get really. Uh, pulse stretch is pretty good. Pulse stretch is like five times. How long is that? That's pretty. <laughs> <laughs> Is that too intense or just, <laughs> just just intense enough? Yeah, okay. Pitch it down? Okay. Uh, there's a thing that lets you change the pitch without changing the speed, right? That's pretty good. What if I just like... <laughs> Holy shit. What if I go the other way? That's what that's what a frog sounds like, right? <laughs> that's like twenty percent seems good. Perfect. Yeah, I'm just gonna slap just send that straight to the desktop. Hmm? Yeah, I think it's fine. It definitely imports. I can just like yeah, I can just totally import that right now. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> Should I just play it once once at the start of the layout every time? Uh, oh, I haven't added the audio object. That's my problem. Audio. Yeah, I always do that. Everything like just always like at sort of like ten or twenty percent random pitch is like perfect. Uh, I hope this isn't like super boring or anything. <laughs> I wasn't sure like what like I've never done this before. I'm just. Uh, <laughs> Extreme, but <laughs> yeah, maybe that's an extreme. Oh, it doesn't stop playing the previous. <laughs> yep. Wow, that's good. You did. <laughs> that's pretty good. <laughs> oh my god! What have I done? I'm so I'm kind of I'm satisfied with the eye distance range here. This is I mean this is pretty much like my whole work process is just like moving numbers around slightly until I'm happy. What should I do? I should I should give the pupils a random rotation too. Copy that line. Uh, so we need a mouth now, right? Actually, I kind of want to give it like a body first. Is that weird? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. This isn't science. <laughs> what is the? Uh, hold on a second. Do I need to like? I want that color. Do I need to know what a frog body looks like? I don't want to draw like a cartoon one. It's too obvious. I just want to do like a. That's like a foot. Do you think it's acceptable for body for frogs to have like one body shape right now? For the time being, yeah. 
Wait, how many legs do frogs have? <laughs> Yeah, they'll just like they'll just have like little tiny paws in the front here. <laughs> Wait, how's hmm? Yeah, I get it. Yeah, I got it. <laughs> It looks less like balls now, right? Sure. <laughs> sure. Let's just say, just make me feel better. That's a weird. This looks more like a. I don't know. I'm not a biologist. <laughs> Obviously. <laughs> That's good. Yeah. Oh, you know what would be great actually is just to set the head to like a random position. How do you do that? After it's created. Oh no, because I can like move. No, wait, I have to put it in the start one. This is a good way to like, if you want something to sort of like, I don't know, have a radial position from somewhere, and just place it and then move it at like a random angle and a random distance. Oh yeah, totally. I'll do that after, yeah. Uh, is that too much? <laughs> Good. Okay. <laughs> oh, I'm going to start actually, you know what? This is like I don't like how static this is. So I'm already going to start like adding some behaviors to things. I'm going to put like an angle sine angle movement on the head. I think that I can do this. Like, give it like a range of uh, 20 and then a magnitude randomness of 40. Does that make sense? Because let's go both ways. So it's like, yeah. I think that works. Okay. Yeah, it's weird. So then when I create my eyeballs, I shall pin them the head. But just the position. Or oh no, it's not. Rel it's not relative. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> I think it's. Is it units? I don't know what that. I don't know how that works. Sure. Uh, and I'm also gonna like pin these things. Did I do that? <laughs> do the thing that I just intended to do? I'm so in the zone, I don't even know. I didn't. Okay. I did? What? I'm supposed to be able to, like. Oh, there it is. Okay. another like sign I want to give like three or four more signs actually <laughs> but you know baby steps I think that'll give it a little bit of a, like a horizontal oh yeah good 
Yeah. <gasps> he needs a neck, actually, right? Frogs are known for their long <laughs> necks, right? <laughs> Wait, uh, what, uh, how big does it need to be? Again, this, I'm not a scientist. This is not exact. <laughs> what does a frog's neck look like? Is it just like it's like a, a cone? <laughs> I think it's like a cone. Uh, but it has to be... I think I'm gonna, what I'm going to do is make it so that this thing... i got to name my things again. Body. I'm going to like put it to the midpoint of some point on the body and some point on the head. Hey, do you remember how to find the midpoint of some of two things? Is it like you, you got Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. Wait, it's like you add the x and then divide it by zero? <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay. <laughs> I don't, I, yeah. Maths. Um, I have this thing, right? Oh, wait, that doesn't work. No, it has to be the head. Uh... And the body, but it's actually the it's actually the image point. Yeah, Ooh, this is advanced. Yeah, image point X. Uh, yeah, you have to say like one. I have to add them though, not just like write <laughs> not just like write them both down. Yeah, just like there, just you know, for fun. Yeah. Yeah, I know. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I don't know. <laughs> uh, oh, but it also needs to set its angle, right? So I got like... Can I set it towards the position? I'm just going to... I'm just going to... Stuff. Do I still have that body damage? Oh, that actually looks slower than just typing it again. <laughs> I'm really glad I put this soothing music on because otherwise I'd be really stressed out. <laughs> that seems right. This might be rotated 90 degrees, actually. It's definitely rotated 90 degrees, right? Oh, I guess I could just, I, you know, I could fix that or I could just, like, rotate the sprite. There we go. Problem solved, I think. No, the other way. The other way? Yeah, it seems to be, like, completely backwards. No, wait. That way. Yeah, that way, okay. But I also need to set the size to, like, the distance between those points, right? That would be the width. This seems like it'll work. <laughs> Wait, hold on. I want to get the... What's that? <gasps> I'm sorry to spend so long on the neck. I, I know it's not like the most... It's not the most exciting. Wait, what did I just do? No, I wanted to put... I wanted to make a distance between those points. Will this work? I think it'll actually be too small because it's not like. <laughs> yeah, sure. Accurate, accurate frog. Yeah, I should move it to the back, right? Like it's not like a weird nose. <laughs> as if, as if it were not a, a weird nose. Uh, yeah. Wait, I don't need to do this every tick though. Has a creation event. Oh, I'm sorry. Am I like super mumbling? By the way, I'm kind of in a. 
super mumbling, <laughs> ultra mumble. No, I'm trying to just put the. Oh wait, did I? I'm just trying to make sure that that's actually on the right layer, even. Okay. Yeah, there we go. Okay, cool. <laughs> Frogs. <laughs> Sorry? 20 to the width? Oh, maybe I should, like, randomize the width. Oh, shoot. It should be, like, synced to the audio, you know? Like... I can't really do that right now, but... I think somebody from the yeah, audience yeah. suggested you do the width on a sine wave like it's doing its horrible oh, uh, inflatable I see what you mean thing. Now. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, let's do that. Yeah, good good point. That's very accurate frog behavior. Um again, I don't know. It's the change of the magnitude, so I guess Ah, we'll see how it goes. Yeah, it's gone. <laughs> oh shit, yeah. I still need to. I, I need to remember to put the. Um, let's just do it every tick. I'll put the body to the bottom. Put the body to the bottom. Yeah. Uh, yeah. This thing really needs like a mouth. Huh? Yeah. Should the mouse just be a line? Like, it should be a frown. It should always be frowns. Yeah. Once I made once I made one where the um to get more out of the mouth lines, they just like randomly had a chance of being flipped upside down. <laughs> That's a pretty good way of doing. Mouse. This is too big. It'll just be like a gradient of like more and more extreme sadness. You need a little light. Hmm. I'm not sure. There we go. Just one happy one? Okay, but the happy one should be like, it should be like tiny happy, right? Like just like. That's it. Wait, that's it. No. There we go. That's it. <laughs> Wiley has requested an even more extreme frown. <laughs> even more extreme frown. Upside okay. down U. Yeah, it should just be like. Yeah. Wait, Correct. I need the line to do that. <laughs> no, just the line? Okay. Can I add one? I, I want to do one with teeth. <laughs> Frogs don't have teeth, do they? They have little like spikes, right? Like shark teeth. Yeah, this one's gonna be good. It's gonna just have a little like. How many? How many t teeth the frogs have? That seems like a good size. It's probably not even gonna be on the face at all. It's just gonna be. <laughs> Uh, so, the head shall spawn the mouth, as they say. <laughs> yeah, layer one, thank you for pinning me. Oh, I should, I gotta pin it to the, the head again. Gosh, I'm, it's always so sad to see these, like, new things, and then you forget to not call them just sprite. Oh, yeah. I think you should do that 
before making the eyes. I don't know why. I just wait. I put that in the weird place. Uh, oh yeah, here's a, a thing that's bothering me actually. Is like the it's filter. It's sampling. It should be pixely. I think. Oh wait, I forgot to. <laughs> oh god, I forgot to not animate the mouth. Okay, wait. <laughs> I like. Oh man, I should have made them all separate animations, and then they could just have like a little boiling. <laughs> that seems right. I lost my train of thought, sort of. I think that'll work. <laughs> I don't know if this is what I was going for. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just moved it to the bottom, so it would be really fun. I think there need to be like multiple pupil types too, maybe. Like I'll add a round one, even though it's not right. Wait, don't some frogs have like plus shaped pupils? Am I dreaming? Yeah. Oh yeah, I'm thinking. I'm thinking of Kermit. Yeah. So that's that's good. That's just like. Ugh. It's not. Hmm. Good enough. Oh, I want to add one that's like really tiny. No, no, no. A triangle? Just sure. Yeah, I want to. It'd be like a. Mm. <laughs> oh yeah, I did. I did the same thing again. I need to like not make that an animation. Oh, they're not going to be the same. I think the I think the head should I think the head I think the pupils should be the same. I'm okay with them moving separately, but there's something upsetting about them not being the center. Pupil type. No. Pupil It's like painfully slow compared to like actually coding stuff. No. no. Good. <laughs> Just like move that up here somewhere. Sure. GP, we're actually getting close to time. What oh, will really? The, what will the final? Frog yeah. detail B. Hmm. I could add color. Yeah, I could add color. I think I have no idea if this is gonna work, but I'm gonna try just like tinting the whole layer. Actually, I wanted to like do some like just like slap some effects on there because that's always fun. There's a really good one that's like, uh, is that it? Yeah. <laughs> so now it's like it's underwater. You know? Ugh. Hmm. Tint mask. Um, <laughs> not quite. <laughs> Maybe I'll, I'll, wait, I'll tint it, and then I'll just like, no, I want more saturation. More power. Um, I'll put the gamma to like, something, I'll kind of like boost it, you know? Mm. Yeah, that's good to me. Mm -hmm. that's <laughs> yep, that's exactly what frogs look like. Should they trend, should they tend to be like more green, do you think? Does that make sense? No, just full, <laughs> full rainbow. We'll give you that idea. <laughs> Set effect parameter. Huh? Oh, it's a layer, not layout.
Oh, I have to set it for each separately. Okay, so like. That seems right. That seems like a good range of colors to me. Nope. Wait, actually, yes, but that wasn't what I was trying to do, but yes. That's correct. Hey, GP, they're mm -hmm. going to let us not clear the theater and just go directly from you into our first tournament, so go crazy. Really? <laughs> okay, Frog nice. it up, buddy. <laughs> sure. <laughs> oh, thanks. <laughs> you know, like five minutes of more frog. Yeah, yeah, okay. Let's just, let's slap some more effects on there. I'm gonna like you know, like do a bit of horizontal. No, not horizontal. There, that's gross. <laughs> horizontal glow. That's kind of actually. Cool. We should probably put a sign out sheet. Rusty, if, do you have a sign up for regular human basketball? Uh, just let people come up. Okay, no, that I don't sounds like, good. I don't like that one. Well, let's see how this. Yeah, let's see how this works first of all. I guess. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Look at that guy. <laughs> I could do this. I could do this all day. Oh. Make what? Oh, yeah. How could I do that? <laughs> I could just like I could rotate the pupil towards the mouse, but I don't know how to like move it in a range. Yeah. Hmm. Maybe I like this idea a lot. I might save it for later though. Actually, do you have a nose? Frog nose. Yeah, yeah frog nose. Yeah. Obviously. There should just be like one type though, and it's just two dots. I want to get really detailed and have like a nostril, like a whole nostril spacing, like parameter. Nostril AI. Nostril AI, yeah. It's like there's a, like a nostril director that sort of like sees your mood and kind of like just decides what the what the good you know nostril range would be for you. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think um like basically to get things that are really like good, you have to sort of leave the range open. Like it has to be like if you if you narrow things down too much, which is usually what you need to do to like keep it either creepy or cute, then you like sort of have a less like expressive range. Although I know that people kind of like universally find the, the cat mouths with the teeth <laughs> unsettling. <laughs> like any time that has, one has that, it's just like people are like, ugh. <laughs> but. Oh yeah. I guess I can just be like right in the center of the face, right? <laughs> That's not quite how nostrils work, I guess. It's not attached to his face either. Oh, the mouth should make the, yeah, wait, wait, hold on. I should have like an image point on the mouth that I'll be like, yeah, yeah right? What do I have that at home? But I'll, I'll have to move it later, though, but yeah. That's cool. This is actually something really fun about having stuff, like I was saying earlier, object based, though, is you can have, like, like I don't really have any here, but some of the ones I've worked on have. Things that are kind of like deeply nested. So like I had a the better version of the Goblin generator that I haven't finished yet has like a whole like hat generating system, and it's just like some of the characters will wear a hat, and it just spawns like a hat object that has all these its own decisions. So the mouth will spawn the nostrils, as is our way. Yes, thank you for <laughs> every time. Uh, I guess this should be, oh, I can pin it to the mouth, and then the mouth can have a, a sign behavior too. Oh, you know what? The mouth should move like really, really quickly, right? <laughs> no? <laughs> the period will be like half a second, maybe. 
I think this will I think this will work out great. <laughs> it always, it always does. Uh, so to that way. And then it should pin it to the It's really helpful having you here. This is like to remind me what I was thinking two seconds ago. <laughs> Can't move the position because of the the uh, well, because of the uh, it's pinched to the head. No, I oh no, sorry, that was a good one. It's mostly working. Oh. <laughs> yeah, full screen. Sorry. I want to do it fast again. I should definitely, this is, should definitely be the soundtrack, right? Yeah. Oh, is it just because Yeah, I think someone were just in the one. Uh, no, I don't know why it doesn't move, though. So. I guess the oh, behavior. Yeah. I could totally do the angle, though. Because I think it's pinned. What does bar style do? <laughs> I don't know what that does. <laughs> I'm sure it'll do something good. No, nope, it's pretty underwhelming, actually. <laughs> Hold on a second. This is, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to crack this. shape is really bug bugging me. I think it's just supposed to be like, you know, like all the way to the end. Mm -hmm. curve isn't working. A stripe? Maybe it should sometimes have a stripe. No. <laughs> I changed my mind. I do want to give it a stripe, but hold on, I just want to get the right color. Any, any other suggestions? Any other questions while I'm doing this? Yeah, any other questions for GP or one last frog? Some? Oh, um, I wonder if I could show, I wonder if I could show something actually. I made a cool thing to generate palettes that I like, but I've got Yeah, col colorlovers.com. Have you ever seen that website? It's this hip new see? social media thing. Yeah, wait, I color lover. You can share palettes with people and love them. Yeah, this site's great. It's just like, you, there's just colors on it. You can just be like, yeah. Co-op mode fully endorses <laughs> color lovers. <laughs> We're pretty active, pretty active on this site. We've got a lot of favorites. I think between co-op mode members, we might have named 10 different colors. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, it's got this great feature where if you like, if you put a like hex value that's never been on that site before, you can name it. And then other people who use it will like see that it has a name. And then it'll email you every time someone uses your color. <laughs> Anytime anybody uses that hex value, you get a note. <laughs> uh, is this the thing that I was looking for? Yeah. So I made, like, I made this thing that just kind of like, it has these really simple rules. How do I? Hello? Um, and it kind of just generates like groups of Wait, how many colors is that? <laughs> Seven? And then I just like throw away two of them, usually. I find it very like surprisingly robust for something that just chooses like two light colors, two dark colors, and one random one. Uh, also, Sam, another artist at Coal Mode made an iOS app called RanPal that randomly generates palettes as well. Yeah, that's how Nog was made. <laughs> <laughs> it's just random colors. <laughs> It kind of feels like we're obsessed with colors. The more I talk about them, the more. Yeah, totally. Can I just show other like random construct projects while we're 
Have you seen this? This is a good. This is really good. Uh, this is my. This is the app that I made. That's all it is. I just started chewing a piece of ice. I'm sorry. Maybe. <laughs> well, never, I never asked. I want to show this game that I showed last time I was here, actually. I'm so sorry that I'm chewing ice. It's a really bad habit. Um, this is like a game where you're a worm, and it's just like hard to move. <laughs> <laughs> This is kind of like, this is just like how I feel most of the time, so. Oh, he says it could be worse. <laughs> the only, like, you can't actually, like, control it very well, but you can kind of, like, just jitter. You can just, like, eh. <laughs> I'll see if I have another thing. I should, I should wrap it up soon, though, right? Oh, uh, I, I. What what ghost? The goose. Oh, do I have that? Yeah, wait. Um, how do I ever, like? What do I? Um, I'm looking for my goose. I don't remember what I call things. Is the problem? I call them things like watermelon punch. That's not that exciting though. Can you see <laughs> Sonic, please? What you want to see Sonic again? Yes, please. <laughs> okay. This is I should have I should have put this in the duplicate game actually. This is my ah oh, shit no get out of here and explore. Is it in preview browser? This is my Sonic fan game. It doesn't have sound yet though. <laughs> this is a sassy sassy Sonic. Oh yeah, this version actually has enemies you can bounce on. They fall apart. <laughs> Oh, oh, I missed him. Shit. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> That's not supposed to happen. <laughs> his, um, his, like, run speed is proportional to the animation speed, too, as it should be. <laughs> oh, not going to make it. He's going back. <laughs> oh, yeah, there's no limit on jumping. You can just, like... <laughs> <laughs> I always, for some reason, I always forget to add that because I just like restrain myself, like naturally restrain myself from jumping. Are you able to get to the Fantastic Arcade Twitter page right now? Me? We've already got some frog fan art. <laughs> really? <laughs> How do I do that? What is uh, Twitter? Fantastic, Fantastic Arcade. Arcade. Oh, I'm, yeah, I am following you, right? Uh, down <laughs> there it is. Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> That's beautiful. Is that Dom? I don't know who that is. I'm, I'm definitely retweeting that one. That's great. Wow. Okay, I really want to show this like goose thing, if I can remember what I called it. It's just... Uh, uh, oh, it's bird walks, I think. It's bird walks. Nope, it's not bird walks. Is it bird game? Nope, it's not bird game. I do a lot of birds. Is it bird dance? No, it's not that. You can see this, though. This is all this is. It was going to be a rhythm game, but I just didn't get around to this. I made this um, dog park game too. That's all it is. <laughs> Stop. Guess what that sound is? <laughs> it, it's me talking and then slowing it down. <laughs> it 
Egg Project. I think you've seen Egg Project, right? That was that's uh, Paloma's game. Um, if I jam sausage, oh, that's for later. Um, oh yeah, if uh, people want after, I have a bunch of stickers and some cat generator buttons that are all unique. Uh, and there's some like rare first generation cat generator <laughs> images in there. <laughs> it's really disappointing. Like, it's a long story. This game's better. Let's get Wolf Gallop's better. <laughs> this is a. Uh, oh god, no, it's not gonna. It's because it uses like the, your default browser, and I just like don't use browser on Windows. So. <laughs> this is the game. I think you're supposed to get the hot dogs. I don't actually remember. I was learning construct. <laughs> yeah, that's the thing. <laughs> no, I don't want to save my changes to that ever. Uh, I don't think I can find it. I'm sorry. Nidhog? It's a. <laughs> a mashup of Knit, Knit Stories, and Nidhogg. I'll make that someday. Nope, that's not it either. It's really bothering me now. No, it's not Hot Walk. That's a game. In, that's a game inspired by Texas, actually. You could show that. I actually I made this uh, on the flight back from my first Fantastic Arcade. Uh, did I delete the? Sorry, there's some debug objects that are like really annoying to look at, so I'm just gonna like delete them from the project temporarily. I can't remember how to Sorry about this. Uh, that should be enough. Yeah. Oh, there's still that angle text. Is that this thing that's like angle text? Uh, Currently, you're angle. Yeah, <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> Do it live. Maybe description is by the time. No, I think it's okay. Uh, so this is that's like a grackle, you know, just kicking around. It's like joggers. Uh, this is a thing where you just like, like try to navigate this world basically. Um, there's these flowers that bloom when you walk by them. Uh, the world actually like wraps around horizontally and vertically. So if I just like keep walking in a direction, I'll come across my own footsteps. Oh, like I found that bird again. Dog. Yeah, there's a dog. <laughs> there's a dog on a post. I'm so proud of that leash. <laughs> Realistic leash physics. Uh, there's actually like, I think you're you're trying to get to someone's house, and there's like you can follow the white signs. I think you'll get there eventually. <laughs> there's obelisks as they are. Yeah, and then they'll wait by. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> it's not done, obviously. <laughs> Thank you. Like such goose and construct. Bad. I'm on the edge of my seat. Is it gonna find it? No. Maybe it's not called anything to do with geese. Where's, I made a I made a potato generator. I don't know where that is. <laughs> no, it's a different one. I've multi made multiple potato generators. <laughs> oh man, I'm a mess. I'm sorry. I don't know how to where to put things. 
Yeah, what is that called? The islands? Oh, do I have a separate? I think, uh, yeah, this might work, actually. Oh, no, this is my train, my train journey um, experience thing. It's just this. I just, like, put it on a second monitor. I mean, like, <laughs> chill out like you're going somewhere. Was this the thing from when you know, Katie Rose was having everybody do train things? I think I started that. Because I, I was, like, I really liked her oh, train did you start window that? thing. <laughs> and so I did this. And then we, we were talking about making, like, lines that you could take on the web by just, like, it would just be, like, different train visuals. It's kind of great. Uh, eventually, it, it, I don't know what the problem is, but the mountains just get taller and taller until they're just like these vertical lines, and it's all glitchy. And that's kind of cool. So unless you can find the goose, I think yeah. we're probably going to move it's on okay. to it's some okay. more tournament yeah. stuff. Uh, does anybody have any other questions for GP? There's one. Damien? Yeah. Wait, what, what? Oh, shh. <laughs> Goose walk. Oh, what's it doing there? <laughs> Is it going to open? Oh, uh, whoop. Yeah, yeah, wait, wait, wait. No, not this time. <laughs> so this is like, oh, where's the sound? <laughs> <laughs> it's just this. The level, the level design is in progress, as you can tell. But GP, I hate to break this to you. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> the fit. Oh God, no! The, the track is broken. Yeah, the physics on the head aren't great. No. Tonight. Whoa. <laughs> what happened? Oh, whoa. <laughs> Beautiful. Well, ladies and gentlemen, let's have a hand for our guest, GP Lackey.